whenever we get a nasty market-wide pullback like we had today, I like to think about coming back to the stocks of companies that are riding powerful secular trends. See if they're worth picking up in the weakness. Take Blackhawk Network Holdings. You know we like this one. Symbol Hawk, the leading global distributor of prepaid cards and gift cards, serving hundreds of brands, as well as running incentive and loyalty programs for over 2,000 business partners. The retail space might be a tad soft right now. More on that later. But we know that the gift card industry has been growing by leaps and bounds. And you better believe that gift cards will once again be the number one present in America going to the holidays. Heck, this company has even partnered up with Stockpile to create gift cards to let you buy actual publicly traded stocks, including both household name companies and a bunch of ETFs. How about Blackhawk itself? Here's a company that spun off from Safeway back in April of 2014. Since then, the stock has been roaring higher to the point where it's almost doubled. Now, when Blackhawk last reported mid-October, even though the company blew away the earnings estimates, their guidance for the next quarter was more conservative than people expected. Stock got slammed, falling 10% in a single session. Since then, though, just like every other sell-off in this stock's short history, Blackhawk has come roaring back to the point where it's only a couple of bucks below its all-time highs. So can Blackhawk keep climbing here on the strength of the secular growth in gift cards, or should we be more worried about the current cyclical weakness in retail in general? Let's take a closer look with Bill Tauscher. He's the chairman and CEO of Blackhawk Network Holdings. Hear more about how his company's uh, going and where it's headed. Mr. Tauscher, welcome back to Mad Money. Good Good to see you, Bill. Good to see you, Bill. Ever since you've been spun off by Safeway a couple years ago, um, every time you report, there is this, like, bizarre drop. And and, and then you go right back. Do you think it's possible that it's because you're so transparent, you actually say things like, look, we weren't happy with this, we didn't like that, this was a little short. Because I got to tell you, overall, the totality of the call was very good, and yet there I was shocked that it went down 10%. Well, geez, I hope you were going to explain it to me, because (laughs) I was as shocked. Uh, We were very pleased with the quarter. We're kind of very pleased with where we are with our secular business uh, results and forces and all that stuff. So it was a bit of a shock. I I, I can't wait to, I can't quite decide whether I should just quit giving earnings calls. Maybe that's the thing. <laughs> well, in the call, burning the call was something that I that you pro, that you mentioned might happen. I want to talk about it for our viewers. Gift cards to give people stock and ETFs. How will that work? Well, it's really simple. We basically created a card that's a prepaid card, goes on a rack, specialty wrap plus a specialty part on the very the big rack we have for gift cards. We've got it testing now in 1,500 stores. We did a lot of consumer research on this. You go to the rack, you buy a card, you give the money at point of sale, just like you do for a gift card, and that card's now loaded. It then directs you to a website, much like an open loop gift card does. That's a stockpile website. Ingenious website allows you to really register in a matter of a couple of minutes and that $50 worth of stock you get to buy. A couple of values of that. If you think about stocks, a lot of them are high priced. There's a lot of people who don't know how to buy stocks or buying $800 stocks just doesn't work. Buying a partial share for $50 really works. And of course, that allows us to use a prepaid card because it isn't variable. It's $50 by $50 of cards. The research told us two things. About 30, 40% of the people are really uncomfortable with trading the stock market, don't know how to do it, can't right. figure it out. So there's a big self-use component here. We think a whole bunch of people are going to get comfortable with stocks because of what we're providing. And then the second one is gifts for kids or family members, younger people to this teach them about stocks. This is what I'm thinking stock. about. Think, my, my joke all the time is I'm going to give my kid a gift of partial Apple stock. I'm going to feel better. He right. might not like me as much that I didn't give my tones, but I feel I feel a lot better that I gave him stock and taught him a lesson. Right. You see, that's what I was thinking. I just literally for for Thanksgiving, I sent I like to send my kids cards. I put in a little iTunes thing in one of them, and I was thinking, no, I should put in one of yours. But I'm not near where the test is. I guess I don't see the test. No, it's only in 1,500 stores, and of course, for that with our 60,000 stores, that's just a test. Okay. Uh, we'll get it going sometime as if this year ends up. And we go into next year. It's very exciting. Now this is your big season. It is. And. Uh, uh, is it also the big season in uh, places like Germany? Oh, yeah, just about everywhere except for the Far East. Oh, yeah, because I know you're starting to move big into China. Yeah. So why are your uh, EBITDA, your, your numbers, so much uh, lower? You, why do you make so much less in Europe than here? Well, part of it is because it's, it's, it's 
all around the world, we are sort of behind right, the curve yes, of what we did in the U.S. We're just not as mature. Part of it is because uh, we literally went for a long time investing, and we just turned that curve where you get in any business, where you kind of go over that curve of profitability, and then your marginal profitability is much greater. So I think internationally, we're going to see profitability gains outpacing the U.S. Okay, how's the uh, the the thing you do, the loyalty thing that you do for different companies? How's that going? Well, we couldn't be more pleased. You know, we made this big move to go buy companies uh, basically based on a trend that just like gift cards are a bigger portion of gifting, right. gift cards are now becoming a bigger portion of incentives. Right. And a perfect example is that are these loyalty programs for points, credit cards, airlines. You can name all the places, even your own company, where you get points, and those points you go somewhere to get rewards. Well, it used to be merchandise right. or travel. Every year, gift cards now become a bigger portion of what yes. people choose. So it was a natural place for us. We're the biggest in gift cards. We have all these scale and economies. And if we went and got really quality companies in the space, we could build synergies that were natural with our gift card production. And then, of course, see growth because it is a growing industry but, and it's working wonderfully. But it, is the IRS going to shut it down? I know right now they're okay with gift cards. Is there a certain level where the IRS is going to get involved here? Oh, no, all the gift cards that are given for employee incentive programs and the other, they get, it's all done uh, tax compliant. It's all tax compliant. Our systems do okay. all of that. Okay. And, uh, you know, who, who's powering the technology? Samsung's doing a lot of your technology? Well, if you're talking about the incentive programs, that's all our platforms. Okay. If you're talking about some of the new technology that's coming up to pay for things. Right. People like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay, we're basically of putting ourselves inside those payment vehicles so you can store gift cards, look right, up balances, and pay with them. And this is the digital. This That's is right. how you're going to stay one step ahead of the policy That's right. and not because of the secular trend out one day of That's plastic. Right. Although, you know, Visa MasterCard would tell you it's going to take a long time to get out of plastic. It is, by the way. All right. That's Bill Tauser, Chairman and CEO of Blackhawk Networks Holdings. I sure hope that the test succeeds and I can give my kids some Apple so that they can hold it rather than some iTunes so they can spend it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bill. Good to see you, Thanks, sir. Jim. Good to see you. Black Hawk Holding, H-A-W-K. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.